In every revolution, there's one man with a vision. Hey everybody, Steve here. It's been about seven years since I started my writing journey. Uh, yeah, back in 2017, I started writing my first book, uh, Deadlock. And then I got Fallout, the sequel, done. And coming up June 3rd, this little gem right here, Shattered, will be coming out. And I've learned a lot uh, in the last seven years about writing. And I want to share some of the stuff I've learned with you guys, uh, hopefully to inspire, to help get you over some writer's block, or if there's some hump you're trying to deal with, just, you know, just know that writing is tough. You know, you're sitting by yourself, you know, writing. Trust me, there are guys like me out here rooting you on. Think about that while you're writing. But I want to share with you some things that I've learned in, in, in my in my little writing career so far, and I want to uh, pass them on to you. So, the first thing, not all advice is good. The first thing, or one of the first things I did when I first started writing Deadlock was I went on YouTube, you guys are now, and uh, I started looking for writing advice. And there is a lot of writing advice on. And I did find some good videos out there uh, with some good advice. But I got to be honest, 98% of the videos, the advice was just, it was either bad advice or the people giving the advice just didn't seem authentic. Now, what does that mean, authentic? Uh, I'm not trying to, you know, point fingers at anybody, but a lot of them, a lot of the unauthentic Writers tended to be the the ones that had the the bright white rooms with bookshelves that just had you know meticulously curated bookshelves with you know books are all color coded you know everything hanging on the walls was just so pretty and every now and then they'd have some kind of furry animal crawling around on them I just I just couldn't you know. I just couldn't believe them. Uh, I'm a guy. I have a nine to five job. Uh, as you can see behind me, this is my writing room. Uh, I, I got a, I got a fridge behind me, a little mini fridge. I got toys and books and figurines hanging on the wall. Uh, I got other comic books. What you can't see is a mess. I got, I, I got a mess around me. I got. Piles of comic books off to my side that I need to rebag and board. Uh, that advice I got from those people just didn't didn't really seem to resonate with me. Uh, like I said, I did find good advice, but the thing is, you need to take everything you hear and see on YouTube with a huge grain of salt, including everything I say. Now. I try not to give advice. I'm not the kind of guy who's going to come out and say, these 10 words must never be in your book, or these five ways to start a paragraph are the only five ways you can start it, or else your book's going to you know, never sell any copies. Those people are just bad. Uh, don't let anyone tell you you can't do something. It's your book. You can do whatever you want. Uh, I just, for me personally, when I make these videos... I like to let you guys in on how I do things and how it's worked for me, and I present it to you. If that resonates with you guys, if, if you hear something that, you know, might work for you and you and you want to use it, that's great. If not, find the right video and you grab hold of it and don't let go because that video is going to help get you through a lot of stuff. So, yeah, don't listened even the even the real seasoned ones you know the the the, the really in uh, the the high profile authors sometimes their advice is just lousy and that's not because they're giving lousy advice that's just because 
they're living in a whole other world. Their, their whole world is just writing. A lot of us, again, nine to five jobs. I got a family. I can't spend every waking moment writing. I have about two or three hours a day to get stuff done. Uh, there was this one video I saw where this guy gave this, this unrealistic word count. Uh, it was like 15,000, 20,000 words a day. And if he said he didn't hit that goal, he just didn't feel like he did a good job. Well, that's not advice everybody can take. Uh, so I took his video and I just got to push it to the side. I said, thanks, but no thanks. So please, do your research. Watch as many videos as you need to watch. And when you find the right one, then, 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 then grab hold. But just be wary of the advice. Next up, write for yourself. As a new writer, one of the first things I saw was writing to market. And that seemed like good advice at the time because you look at the market and let's just say romance novels are the big thing. I'm not a romance guy, but if I want to make money in writing, I'm going to write a book that a lot of people are buying. So I'm going to spend time writing. I'll spend months, you know, outlining and writing and editing and getting the, the, the book cover done and formatting. And I'm going to put it out there. And it may take me months. It might take me a year to get this book out. And by the time my romance book gets out there, now the market wants action adventure or they want a murder mystery. Now I have to scrap all the plans for the romance stuff and I have to write a new thing. Again, that might not be a, a, a niche I want to write in. And eventually I'm going to get burnt out because I'm not writing what I really truly want to write about. I'm writing about what everybody else wants me to write about. Trust me when I say you you watching this video, you are your target audience. I guarantee it, if you write a book that you want to read, there are a lot of other people out there who want to read the same book. So don't disappoint them. Don't drive yourself into a early retirement and give up after two or three books trying to chase the market. Write for yourself. Write what you want to read. I guarantee you, you're going to have fun you're going to write a lot more. And even if you don't get the success you want right away, at least you're still writing and you're doing what you love. I've written three books so far. I've written a novella. I'm not, you know, raking in the cash. I'm still working my nine to five, but I still love writing. And I still have a lot of stories I want to tell and I'm going to love writing them. And that's the most important thing. And the small group of fans I have, I know they're going to appreciate what I have to write. And it's going to make me feel good getting it out to them. So please, don't chase after the market, unless that's what you want to do. I mean, if, if you can write in a lot of different genres and you have fun doing that, by all means, go after it. But make sure it's what you love. Because trying to write something you don't want to write is just going to, it's just going to drain your soul. And you're not going to want to do it anymore. And that's going to that's going to take the story you really want to tell somebody. And they're never going to get a re chance to read that story. So don't deprive them. Write your stories and get them out there so we can all read them. Next, take your time when you do this. Uh, even my non-writer friends were telling me, Steve... This is a marathon, not a sprint. Take your time. Things will happen. And it really is a marathon. Um, the last thing you want to do is try to race through and, and write a book real quick and sloppy and get it out there. Because you know what they say about first impressions. You only get one chance. And if your first book is written fast and sloppy and you're just trying to get it out there so you, you can get something done, people are going to notice and you can fix it. You can, you know, come back from it. But it's going to take you a lot longer. So take your time. On your first draft, take your time. Take your time finding an editor, a good one. 
Take your time finding a good cover artist. Take your time finding a good uh, formatter. So your book looks the way you want it to look when you finally get it written. There's no prize for getting your book done in a month or two months and rushing it out. Uh, so, so, so please take your time, relax, enjoy the process. I know, like I said, I'm, I'm a slow typer, 2,500 words in three hours. But when I get done writing those chapter or chapters, I feel good. I feel like I've accomplished something. And I can't wait to come back tomorrow and the next day and continue on with the story. It might take me longer than everybody else. But again, I have other things I need to do. I have other I have other focuses. I can't focus all my attention on this. So when I do do this, I make sure to take my time and make sure it's done right. So those are my three little uh, nuggets of wisdom I have uh, for you guys. Hopefully, again, hopefully this inspires you. Uh, what nuggets do you have? Uh, share them in the comments. I'd love to... Uh, get some new uh, nuggets of wisdom myself because there are times where I sit down and even though I love what I do there are times where I just sit down and I'm like uh I just I just it might be a slog some days but I still do it and in the end it's something I love to do I hope you guys love it too I hope you guys are watching this video and if something clicks great I'm happy I'm so happy if this doesn't click please move on to the next video but find the video that will that will give you that spark that that, that inspiration to sit down and start writing your story uh, like i said it's not me it's somebody else find them grab a hold of them and when you do let them know that you're following their advice or you're following their little words of wisdom that's really gonna help them too because indie writers, we got to stick together. You know, it's 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 tough out there. So, and only an indie writer is going to understand another indie writer's uh, woes. So, that's all I got. <laughs>